this is like mind blowing on what's basically going around. And uh, it happened in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Charles Dotty Jr. pulled out an AK 47 on Little Caesar's staff because he had to wait 10 minutes for his pizza. Now, I always say if we had uh, mental asylums or basically things for mentally ill people, um, to be honest with you, I think in general we needed places like like asylums to come back, to be brutally honest with you. Problem is, you know, all these politicians who want to talk a good game on both sides of the situation, Republicans and Democrats, and they don't come to the real conclusion on what we actually need to do in America. We actually need to get more money for mental health funding so this, this shit doesn't happen. Be brutally honest, and it's kind of weird at the same time. He's in a... He brings an AK-47 in a Little Caesars. The lady, unfortunately, was his first... It was her first day. That's kind of like a good first day message, to be honest. I'd be terrified if I was her. And and, and, and the total bond, basically, is $90,000. So... <laughs> so, frankly, he comes in to the... Uh, the Knoxville, Tennessee Little Caesars and pulls an AK-47 out. You know, it, it, like, you know, he went to his car. It, 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 we need mental health funding stat and we need mental institutions to open back up. Uh, personally, this Charles Dottie Jr. technically, if the reports are true, because allegedly he did it, that's what everyone's saying, allegedly, 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 who knows what the news is popping out nowadays? We don't know. He, but allegedly, he pulled an AK-47 out, and uh, that's what happened. There could be two sides of the situation, or multiple sides. There are three sides. The truth, the right side, and the left side. The truth always comes out at the end, to be honest with you. But to be honest, it, it's kind of like an unspeakable technical thing when you look at it. That, um... You know, someone, if somebody just gets angry of a 10 minute wait for a pizza, like a slice of pepperoni, like a pepperoni pizza, and it takes 10 minutes, and you and you get so angry you pull an AK-47 out, okay? Now, this is, they could just say a weapon. They could actually say a weapon, but now the media is now saying AK-47, to be brutally honest with you. They're, they're trying to make a, a statement of saying AK-47, well be honest with you. They're trying to really make it sound like, oh my god, he pulled out a semi-automatic or a fully automatic AK-47. Basically, they're basically saying they're actually, he pulled out a something you know, people use in a war AK-47s. Like the Taliban uses the AK-47 and all that. But in, in theory, they can just say he pulled a gun or he pulled a weapon, basically, you know. Or a firearm. And then they say AK-47. To me, I think the news is trying to do something, trying to, like, do guns, you know, you know, making guns bad type of situation. But on another hand, if, if this is true, he decides 10 minutes is not too, is way too long, and I'm going to pull out a, a, a weapon. To be honest with you, that's going too far, to be honest with you. And there must be something more to the situation. Because if someone just pulls out a gun during a 10 minute wait for pizza, you there's got to be a screw loose. Because, frankly, who in the right mind pulls out an AK-47 or any type of gun if their pizza's going to take 10 minutes to make? He probably was off his medication... He probably is not mentally right in the head that should not have weapons, to be brutally honest with you. There's some people out there that should never have weapons, and there's some people that should have weapons. And, uh, you know, if we're 10 minutes away from pizza, you pull an AK-47 out, or any type of gun, 
that's not acting civil. It's not civilized nature. Um, if that's the truth. So I'm gonna, you know, everyone's innocent before being proven guilty, but something doesn't really add up. He pulls an, he pulls a semi-automatic or yes, yeah, like a semi-automatic or fully automatic. They don't tell you if it's fully or semi. They just say AK-47. I assume if he's a civilian, it's going to be a semi-automatic because they don't have fully automatic AK-47s for uh, civilian use. But let's just say, in general, he pulls out a weapon because his pizza is only going to take 10 minutes. That's something you just don't pull a gun out. It's really not good. It's You have to look at the mental status of the man. Um... That's why mental institutions should come back. That's why states need to start, you know, not throwing their money into prison systems and jail systems for mental health. They have to give it to the third-party entities, the non-for-profits, who are basically on the front lines trying to keep us safe, to be brutally honest with you. Have you ever seen some of these mental health places that, you know, they're trying to do their job, but they don't have the funds, so they actually have to say... We don't have the funds to take care of you, but the guy's severely mentally ill, or the woman's severely mentally ill, and they can't get their, you know, medicine prescriptionized. I personally think PCP providers, personal care providers, um, should write prescriptions for mental health medicine. Um, there's a lack of mental health funding, and there's a lot of, there's a lack of doctors who want to get into psychology and psychiatry. A lot of states don't have, like, a lot of towns and cities don't even have a mental health provider. Or if they do, it's only one. And really, it all goes on to them. And they're getting their money taken away from the state. And, you know, the county really is not helping. Or the city's not really helping. It's like, you know, it's kind of like a weird situation they're in. They're in a deal of a pickle. They don't even receive anything. And, you know, most other people who have mental illness and everything else don't pay their co-pays. So, really, it's coming from generous donations from generous people of the community. And to be honest with you, they have to pick and choose who to help and who not to help, to be brutally honest with you. You know, there's people that are in mental health, you know, go to seek services, but they don't want to get better. They just want their medicine. Or they want just to waste people's time. And frankly, you know, that's usually what happens. And what do you do with that, you know? You can't really, you know, and then they go to the ERs, basically. That's the sad part. When you look at it, most of the mental health industry, because you can't get denied ER visits. Uh, they have to take you in. And so you get the lowest of the low, technically, going into the ER rooms. They're in psychosis. And they'll start battering staff. They'll start spitting on staff. They do this, do that. And they're not right in the mind. And they have to adore... Like, the emergency... It's kind of weird. Like, like uh, there's a doctor. I think his name is Dr. Stay or something. He's um, an ER physician. And he's a comedian at the same time. But it's kind of like, open your mind. Like He's like, oh, I know this, blah, blah, blah. You know, he basically goes on jokes, and his one is jokes is, and it's actually true, but he made it as a joke, but it really is, specialists and personal care providers, just specialists and personal care providers, can deny you uh, services because if you don't have insurance, you have to pay outright, and usually they pay outright after service is rendered. ERs, in another ca case, emergency rooms, have to accept everybody, and the problem is, ER doctors can still get sued for malpractice in an ER. So they can accept anyone, and you usually get the, you know, unfortunately, emergency rooms are supposed to be for emergencies, if you're having chest pain, or something like that. But people, in general, go to the ER because they don't, they, that's their only doctor they can go to. You know, it's kind of like, they don't have insurance, and they just go to ER with the problems. And ERs are not meant to be a supplement for personal care providers. ERs are for if you have a brain bleed, if you're having a heart attack, you're having chest pain, um, if you have, you know, like, basically, you know, in septic shock, something like that, they can bring you back to life. But 
personal care providers supposed to prevent that to happen? And now a lot of personal care providers are having sliding scale and all that. That's good. Mental health is kind of a sticky situation because they're getting their money taken away from them a lot of times. And private practices are allowed to deny services. On another hand, you know, where they go, where do these people go when they're off their medication and they can't get a refill and you have to go see a doctor? Be brutally honest with you. And they have to go to the emergency room basically they're in, because they're in psychosis. That's an emergency. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a never ending cycle. You know, it's very sad, really. Um, we should have hospitals like mental health hospitals. Not just regular emergency rooms, but mental health hospitals. Basically, to take people who have mental illness, and they should, you know, mental health hospitals, just from behavioral health. There are some states that have hospitals like that. I think North Carolina has one. Um, other states have them, but I think North Carolina was the first, basically, to have that. And North Carolina is actually... Very good with mental health services. Unfortunately, my state, Florida, it's really not a good state for people with mental illness. It really, it's not. And it's a very sad thing, too, because this is where all the people come... I used to like saying, and I, I heard it on Family Guy, it's God's waiting room, basically. Florida is considered God's waiting room. And uh, when you say that, you laugh. But really, all the elderly people come down here because they want to retire. And most of the people here in Florida are retirees. Or, in, in general, people in Florida, you know, move from, like, usually up north to south. You know, that's what technically Florida is. It's like God's waiting room. And, uh... You know, it's, it is what it is. And, you know, when, when your family has dementia or an Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, you know, when the elderly... You know, the mental illness like that, it's very rare to really have any place to put them, to be honest with you. There are some places out there, like when my grandpa broke his hip at 99 years old, he was turning 100 the next couple weeks, he um, broke his hip in the bathroom, we took him to the emergency room, and then uh, everyone decided, I think the state decided to put him in, uh, because he's, he was super old, he was like 99, so... They want him into some type of therapy, uh, a therapy, uh, type of thing. So, like, like a, like a physical therapist type of place. And at the time, he had only just basically Medicare and, you know, it was a Humana plan. I remember that. And I remember my dad, unfortunately, my dad died, like, a couple weeks, or a couple months, I think a couple months after he went into that thing. And we basically, that my grandpa going into the uh, shelter type of thing, not shelter, but the, the, the rehab place. And my dad, in general, was all stressed out, and he passed on, and we never told my grandpa about, you know, his son just died, because he was losing his mind, basically. It was just completely insane, to be brutally honest with you. And, uh, it's just like, where are you going to put people with mental illness or, you know, they get Alzheimer's and all that? If they're old, they probably can go to a nursing home and there's a lot of places like in St. Augustine, there's a place called Allegro that, it's a nice place. It's like an assisted living facility. That's very nice, but they actually ask for a lot of money. It's kind of like, you know, these places are like, you buy a little room for yourself and it's right now like $200,000 basically but you pay for that room basically and that's your little home type of thing it's like an apartment living uh, assisted living place so but it's only for elderly people they don't have anything for young middle aged people in general they don't have places like that they do have some psych places private psych places that are communized but they're asking for like five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars to put your loved one in, and you know it's like their own little room that like it's like a building. But really, who has five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars just to throw away for a person to stay at one of these places? 
And there's like no, you know, really no mental health anywhere. There's like non for profits, but they don't really get anything. They, they don't even get money. They get some grants from the state, but then, you know, they stop getting grants because they start taking away stuff. And they put it into the jails and the prison systems and all that stuff. So it's very saddening that the only place for a mentally ill young adult or a mid age adult can go is the ER. And that's just a temporary fix. Because once they get them back on a regimen of medication, they have to, like from a psych ward, they are st two state hospitals, but they'll let them free. They don't keep them there because really they're not getting paid. You know, some insurance companies just allow them to be there for a couple months and they have to be on their merry way. So you got them technically good for that couple months and then they, it's like an all cycle again, going back to the ER and going back to an emergency Baker Act. And it's, dra it's actually draining our nurses and doctors in the emergency departments. It's draining them. It's kind of like... It has to, something better has to be, you know, done. And this, and this man, you know, in theory, I just went off on a rant about our nation's mental health system. But it's a good rant because, you know, he pulled out a gun and, you know, he had to wait 10 minutes for pizza. We need to understand the situation right here. That we need more mental health funding. We need to have better intervention tactics for this particular problem. Technically, he's 63 years age. So he's 63. He's not old enough, per se, to join some... You have to be 65 in some places. But there's other places, like assisted living places or senior living places. You usually go for 55 and older. But really, there's very few of that. But... There's a little more, if you're 65 and older, you can stay at the Allegro or uh, most of the places near the villages, stuff like that. So, yeah, there's places like that, if you're like 65 and older, but usually 55 is kind of like, eh, you know, it's the borderline, and sometimes they accept them, sometimes they don't. And now he has charged with aggravated assault with a count of a, uh, one count and a aggressive kidnapping. Basically, no places will actually accept him. To be brutally honest with you. If he got charged, and if he finds innocent, to be honest with you, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he something happened. I, you know, but if he was if basically, if they say he was innocent, those charges are pretty steep. So you know, if you've been charged with it, then basically, uh, not a lot of these places, uh, most of the places. God forbid one place takes you, and you're gonna be in a you're gonna be evaluated with a fine tooth comb. So, really, most places will not take anyone with charges of domestic battery or stuff like that. They're like, you know, it, even charges. You don't have to be convicted. They don't accept anyone with charges of violence because it can uh, harm their staff or it can harm the, the residents of the facility. They don't let that happen. So most of these people are just on the streets or living with families, and it's kind of a sad situation. It's, it's really sad, and a lot and a lot of these mental health funding just doesn't get funded. And so probably the guy was off his medicine or was really fed up, and he went into a psychosis and got a gun. That's what I think probably happened. I think he basically was in a psychosis, and he didn't know what to really do. Um, Fortunately, you see that all the time. And, uh, this made news because he pulled on AK-47 out. And, to be honest with you, it is, uh, a sad situation for all of us, to be honest with you. It's, there's no winners of any situation in this. There's no winners. And, unfortunately, you have to really look and think, you know... They're talking about Build Back Better. They're talking about this. Not one, I see mental health funding. You know, reopening mental institutions. I don't see any of that, technically. It's just, you know, tax, 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 tax this, tax that. Um, here's your $1,500 check. Have a nice day. To 
build back better, we need to have psych wards. We need, like, like, I don't know, state hospitals for emergencies for mental health. We need stuff like that. To build back better, you know, you know, have doctor's offices, state, like, state doctor off, doctor's office that can prescribe medication for some of these people and have caseworkers monitoring them. And, you know, it, you know, one, one, th one, one entity in one town can't do it all. You gotta have, like, a state run or federally run, whatever. You gotta have something run so they can get their prescription each month. You know, or, you know, whatever, to be honest with you. It's kind of like... It's a sad situation. Very sad. And there's no winners of the situation. And, uh... Really, we need an overhaul for the mental health uh, industry. We need to have an overhaul of our prison systems, our jails, and all that stuff. We need an overhaul. We do. There's some people in jail for marijuana and all that stuff. Serving life sentences, to be honest with you. Serving a long time because it's their third strike and they, they're put away in a felony type of case. It's your third strike and you kind of get a life sentence with your third strike. And there's good people in jail and prison that had marijuana and it's a felony charge and it was their third strike and they're serving a lifetime in prison. We need an overhaul technically with everything. But if we can work on our mentally ill people first and try to get them medicated with caseworkers, monitoring them, I think most of this stuff would not actually occur. Uh, personally, I think if we have some type of program, like if we bring back the mental institutions and all that stuff, I think we would have some type of decent life. Um, you know, not right now. It's Right now, it's everything thrown on the emergency departments and the jail systems and the prison systems. That's basically when everything is thrown on. And, uh, really, you gotta have to rethink this whole, uh, way of life, to be honest with you. It's kind of saddening. You know, there's no winners. No winners to the situation.